My name is Arthur Anthony. I'm the program facilitator. It's called Ujusen Apnuk Nuado, Wind Talkers. Our program is sponsored by the Queen's Learning Network, and what we try to do with our program is we're helping adults to read better and encouraging them to read to their children. And through the program, we introduce our books and our learning material to, so that the parents learn or the aunts, uncles, grandmothers, whoever comes, friends, can take it home and teach the same thing that we teach to them, to the children. The program begins in the evening with an opening prayer. We then have a light meal, which we share together as fellowship and to lighten the, the mood and to get all used to each other and that kind of thing. And then we go on uh, through a 20-week program. We have, we learn uh, some basic Mi'kmaq language, beginning with the uh, phonetics or the orthography of the language. And then we go on to use the orthography to, to put it together with words that people would use every day or could use every day or that they would be familiar with. And we build on from there and teach uh, like conversation, like Gwe, hello, Metawale, and how are you, and those kind of things. This is the third year. We have people that have come back for two years. I'm not sure if we have any third year people or not. And last year the program was approved for two years, so we'll be going into our fourth year next year with it. We are a shy people, and getting to know someone that you don't know, and we, we do over the 20-week period get to know each other, and we do spend the, the 40 hours together, but we've also spent, we spend time outside of the classroom together and have become friends, so I would say that the, that's how People have changed, and uh, we have the opportunity to greet each other in our own language on the street and to, to learn about our culture, too. I think people get a lot of enjoyment out of the program. We try to, to make it that way so that it's not all like a hard learning lesson, that, it's, that uh, people can have fun and learn some language. We teach... We touch on a lot of, of about our culture and try to emphasize things such as the four sacred medicines, the eagle feather, and what these mean to our culture, our drum, our rattles, and some of the tools that we use. And we talk about our, how we lived years ago, 500 years ago. We use books and materials that, at the end of the program, everyone gets all these books. And we have a lot of handout material that we give as well that they are able to take home and continue to look at and to continue to practice with and to be able to share with their families, which is the focus of, of the program. Without language, a culture is not a culture. It must have its language. I listened to a program on the radio the other day where there are at least 60 to 70 indigenous languages being spoken in Canada now. And each day, as people pass on, these languages are lost because there's no one to speak them anymore. So it's very important that we at least try to have people learn parts of the language through us. It's a, it's a very complex language, Mi'kmaq, and for me at my age to try to learn it would be very difficult, but I just hope that by us passing this on to our children, that a lot of our children, or some of our children, or even one of our children were to take interest in and continue on to learn the language and be able to speak it would be an awesome achievement. We have one little girl, I expect she's 
eight or nine years old that attends our class. We also have a young boy who attends our class as well. And I know that the little girl takes the material to school and she presents it to her class and she presents it to other classes, little bits at a time, what she understands and what she knows. She's a drummer, she drums and she sings and she takes that to her class. She understands the impacts of being teased about this because it has happened to her. And through some of our teachings and through her own mother, she has grown stronger and understands, you know, as hard as it might hurt sometimes, but she continues on. Uh, I know that we have an older couple that come and they take it home to their grandchildren and they tell them stories about it, about what we teach. And each little bit of knowledge that is passed on may create a spark or may create interest to have that young child want to learn more, take these books and read them. And the more they read, the more they, they can find out and they can learn that they can talk to elders about things. And I think that it's, it's a very strong growth tool for these children. Activities, when time allows, we do make medicine bags. We do make, uh, we do an eagle feather for each person to take home. And we had been making these as well. These are the, this is the pouch that Gipu found in the forest right down to the gold thread that the bag is tied together with. There is a message inside the bag that says that there are seven sacred teachings. And it's a little hard for me to get this opened up now because the, the uh, birch bark is hardened. But what it tells is that there are seven sacred teachings in this bag. And that if you follow these teachings, you will live, live in peace, harmony, and balance throughout your life but beware of envy and greed. And then it goes on, he goes on through the forest, Eagle does, and each lesson he takes to the forest and teaches to one, he, he teaches the lesson to one of the animals in the forest, and then that animal becomes a knowledge keeper for that particular teaching. And he goes through, and finally, Lesson number seven is the truth, which he carries himself. And what happens when you don't follow this? And how the wolf came in and created envy and greed amongst the animals in the forest. How everything fell apart. And harmony was broken, the peace was broken, the balance was broken. And how hard Gipu had to work to get that back. And when you see Gipu in the sky, you know that Gipu is watching over us and watching over to make sure that this peace, harmony, and balance is maintained. I love doing this. I love to be able to learn myself, and I feel that any little bits and pieces that I can pass on to people. I know that my grandchildren, when they come to the house, there's always so much neat stuff at Papa's house because Papa has rattles that he's made from, from deer hooks that our people were used in years gone by and how we made different rattles from rawhide and the contents, what, what it means to fill a rattle. This one is filled with the three sisters, beans, corn, and squash. And we tell the story about how important it is that you grow beans, corn, and squash together because each one helps the other. The squash shades the ground so the weeds don't grow. The beans grow up the corn stalks. And then it all enriches the soil. So that's what that one's filled with. And we teach that story. I have also a beaver tooth knife which would have been used years ago to make spoons or bowls before there was any metal around or anything else. They would use 
beaver teeth or they would use porcupine teeth or any hard teeth like that that were able to be mounted and sharp, sharpened. These would be sharpened on a rock and that's what they would use. And then when the colonials arrived, crooked knives were made with steel blades. And it is known that anyone, any man, woman, or child could make a canoe using only that as a tool. So those are the things that we pass along as well, and we'd like to see passed along. Through the Queen's Learning Network, we get our funding from them. They pay for the whole thing. They pay for all the books. They pay for the facilitators. They pay for any craft work that we may do. We have tonight, we have a speaker coming in that wrote this book. And he's coming in to present to the class. So it helps pay for the expenses for that speaker to come in. Pays for our meals that we have. Uh, if someone needs a babysitter so that they're not hindered coming here, it will cover the cost of a babysitter for the time while they're here. So it's, it, this partnership is, is very strong. Also, we have, of course, the cooperation of the Native Council of Nova Scotia provides facility for us to, to work at here. Uh, just to go back to the program, the program pays for all the paper, pays for all the printing ink, everything that we need for, for the program is covered. And we use, the equipment here is used. And uh, so that partnership is very strong, providing the place for us to be able to put this on. I was fortunate enough to be able to, I uh, took uh, some night school programs to learn the basic phonetics of the language. And so I'm able to pass that on. My knowledge of the language is very small compared to the vastness and the complexity of the language. But we learn about, we do learn the phonetics. We do learn about what to call our mom and our dad and our grandmother, our great grandmother, our sister, brother. We know how to say all those words in Mi'kmaq. We learn the colors. We learn to count to a million. We learn to, uh, we learn the ancient f foods, all the old foods. We learn animals, birds, fish, the words for them. We learn the words for, for the, the new foods that we eat. And we also learn how the language is kind of tiered. There's old words that have been around for years and years and years, thousands of years. There are words that were created when the colonials arrived to accommodate uh, what they brought. For instance, the word for moose, diam. So when uh, cattle arrived, it was wenju diam, because wenju is the word for a French person. It was the word given to the French people. So wenju diam was a French moose. So that's how they adapted the language in that particular case to be able to uh, say that that's different. That's something that was never here. Wenju soon, which is a cranberry, or is an apple, I'm sorry. Cranberry is soon. And wenju soon would be an apple. And you have to probably think that back in, in the five, six hundred years ago when apple trees arrived here, the apples were probably very small, red, hard, sour, very similar to a cranberry. Cranberries probably were, were more common then. And so that's how they associated that and were able to put a name to, to that apple. So it, and it's those new words. And then there's also words such as lasiette, which is for the French word for plate, which they use for the word plate. We have, we have 20 weeks in over the last three years. We have now so much material accumulated and we've added things to it that we have to decide whether we're going to present all the material because we're bringing in new things like tonight we have a speaker coming which we didn't have before so there's one night that, of material that maybe we won't touch on as much of it as we had before. We've gone through the word learning and the phonetics and the language and that kind of thing. Now we're getting into the storytelling and that, and that will pretty much be for the rest of the program. We've added to it. 
and made improvement, what we feel are improvements to it. The first year was we learned as much as, as everybody else did, but we still had a full program. We were able to present it all, and we kind of, as we went along, we had maybe the first 13, 14, 15 weeks pretty much booked in, but then, well, what are we going to do after that? So then we were able, with the class members, find out what they wanted to learn about, what they wanted to take home with them, and we were able to add to that. So now we have, we could probably go 25 weeks very easily now, 50 hours instead of the 40 hours. But that gets to be a, a bigger, bigger challenge, so. Anywhere 8, 12, 15, and that depends. Some people don't come every night for one reason or another, but every year we've had good attendance. Everyone seems to like to, to come and hear the material that's being presented. It's once a week? Once a week. On to this, tonight is the night. I feel that we play a very small part in the Indigenous education here. I think that Indigenous education should be more, should, should, there should be more of it in the school systems and in universities for people to be able to, to learn what our language and our culture is all about. The storytelling, the knowledge, one of my one of my pet peeves that I like to teach are the lost teachings. Wisdom, respect, humility, love, honesty, courage, and truth. Because without those, people lose a lot of their, their grounding. Mm -hmm. So we have taken, this is one of our important readings that we have. We make sure that everyone, we, we spend a lot of time on this one. This is what part of the... Uh, the learning material, this has some messages in it from Gipu, from the eagle, that he's carried on to the animals in the forest. Absolutely, the lost teachings is the most important one. That grounds you, that sets your, your benchmark for the rest of your life. And when you follow these teachings and understand what these sacred teachings are and live by them each day, then you will be better grounded, better prepared to carry on life, better understand the world around you. In 10 years, I would like to see children be able to speak our language, to be kept alive. And through the language, they would understand their culture. They would understand how the cougar came to be called the ghost cat and the story behind that. They would understand how Ruin awakes every spring and comes to the earth and returns, spirit returns to the sky each year. And about the sharing circles and about medicine wheels and the eagle feather and the medicines for this to be part of their life so that they understand how very important it is. And I think that with that, that these children would have a better life. Our world, I'm sorry to say or sad to say, seems to be stepping backward all the time with less uh, acceptance of, how would I say, anyone that's different. And it's important that we all learn to live together and that we all learn what each of our cultures is about and how each one of us can help. There is a strong movement nowadays for indigenous knowledge to be added to a lot of environmental questions and issues and uh, the science that was learned over the years by our elders is very important. A lot of people don't understand that it's not just cutting a tree down but it's removing an entire ecosystem when you do that. And people need to understand how, how these things work. We, we present our material. Everyone 
writes in it. They have scribblers and books that they can that they write in. They take the material home with them. We provide the material in a printed format, type format. We provide the books. Afterwards, we go through the stories, we read the stories, we discuss the stories and answer questions as best we can about any other and discuss them and, and people understand how this means, what this means to, to our people. And then at the end of, at the end of it all, we, we, we see that they get this, they take it home and be able to share it with their families and their children or, or whoever they want to share it with.